Hey everyone, Mr. Kaczynski again. We are factoring in IXL's Algebra 1 skills, Section AA. Today we're going to deal with special cases, two special cases that can make factoring super quick. These are shortcuts. Uh, the first one I think is really important one to have for future things that we do when we're solving quadratic equations, and that's this idea of what a perfect square trinomial is. So this is what a perfect square trinomial will always look like. It'll be a perfect square uh, as the first term. The last term will be a perfect square. And the middle will be double the product of their square roots. I'll show you what that looks like. Every single time we have that, it can be factored as a plus b squared. Let me show you how that works. So let's make a rectangle diagram. And its area is going to be a squared plus ab plus ab plus b squared. All right, now if we wanted to factor that, all right, it would be a times a is a squared. Also, down here, it's going to have to have a height of b and a width of b to be b squared. And notice the other two, a times b is ab, a times b is ab, and those two will add up to 2ab. So that's, you see you've got a plus b times a plus b, also known as a plus b squared. All right, so anytime we identify this pattern, we can factor it using this pattern. Let me do four real quick because that's the idea. All right, um, what do we have here? We've got... We've got a perfect square at the front, the square root of k is k. We've got a perfect square at the back, the square root of 9 is 3. Uh, in the middle, if you multiply 3 times k and double it, you'll get 6k, but we're going to need to have negative 6k. So the factorization of this is k minus 3 squared. One rectangle diagram, that's it. K minus 3 times K minus 3 would give us K squared minus 3K minus another 3K plus 9, which is K squared minus 6K plus 9. All right, so it's going to work every single time. Um, this one begins with a perfect square. The square root of 4M squared is 2M. Ends with a perfect square. The square root of 1 is 1. And in the middle, if we double, if we multiply 2m times 1, we get 2m. Double it, you get 4m. That rule's got to be true, too. So that is the factorization of that one. Um, this one down here in the lower left begins with a perfect square. Its square root is 3f. Ends with a perfect square. The square root of 25 is 5. When you multiply these two terms together, 3f times 5, you get 15f doubled, 2ab is 30f. So 3f plus 5 squared. Bigger numbers here, the process doesn't really change. Perfect square to begin with, square root of 11, 121n squared is 11n, square root of 144 is 12. We can write this as the square of a binomial. If the product of these, 11 times 12 is 132, doubled equals this middle term. 132n doubled is 264n. So there's the factorization. So that is the perfect square binomial, or perfect square trinomial pattern. Next, we'll move on to this one. It's called the difference of squares, meaning you're doing a perfect square minus another perfect square. All right, that will always equal this. All right, so maybe I'll work backwards this time to do this one. Um, we'll do the rectangle diagram. If you multiply a plus b times a minus b, what happens? a times a, there's our a squared. Um, a times negative b is negative ab. A times positive b is positive ab. And b times negative b is negative b squared. And what happens here is that these terms add up to 0ab. 
That's why there is no middle term there. We just have a squared minus b squared, or a squared plus negative b squared. So every time that we see this pattern, a perfect square minus a perfect square, we can factor it with a plus b times a minus b. All right, perfect square minus perfect square. z squared is a perfect square, and um, 16 is a perfect square. So this is gonna fit what we call the sum and difference pattern. Z plus four times Z minus four. And that's it. I'll do one rectangle diagram just to prove it here. Z plus four times Z minus four. Z times Z, Z squared. Z times negative four, negative four Z. 4 times z, 4z, and 4 times negative 4 is negative 16. These two terms cancel out. Negative 4z plus 4z is 0z, and we're just left with z squared minus 16. So that's the correct way to factor it. Perfect square minus a perfect square. We have the difference of squares. So square root of 64h squared is 8h. Square root of 9 is 3. So we write this as... 8h plus 3 times 8h minus 3. That's the factorization, the length times the width, because we know that the negative 24h and the positive 24h in the upper right-hand corner and left lower left-hand corner will cancel each other out. Perfect square minus a perfect square here. Square root of 16c squared is 4c. Square root of 1 is 1. So sum and difference pattern, 4z plus 1 times 4z minus 1. That's it. Bigger numbers, process remains the same. Square root of 100 v squared is 10 v. Square root of 121 is 11. 10 v plus 11 times 10 v minus 11, done. Remember, this is supposed to be a shortcut. So if we can identify the fact that we've got the difference of two squares, we're supposed to be able to factor it really quick using this sum and difference pattern. And I got two more just because they don't fit the sum and difference pattern. Um, but they kind of do. The first term isn't a perfect square. However, all of these three terms are divisible by 2. So check out what happens when I divide them all by 2. I get 49r squared plus 122r plus 64. Ah, now we've got a perfect square at the beginning, a perfect square at the end, and if we did 7r times 8, we'd get 50, um, I'm sorry, 7r times 8, we'd get 56r. Doubled is not 122 because I divided incorrectly, so let's fix that. It would actually be uh, 112. Yeah. So, do, 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 do 112. All right, so I said 7r times 8 is 56r doubled. That would be 112r. So now it's a perfect square trinomial. We can write this as 7r plus 8 squared. So 2 times 7r plus 8 squared is the factorization of that one. Down here again, neither this is not the difference of squares. However, they are both divisible by 2. They might be divisible by other things as well. But if I factor out that GCF, I get 121s squared minus 81. And now I do have a perfect square minus a perfect square. So we can write that as 2 times 11s plus 9 times 11s minus 9. All right. Almost a 10-minute video here, but I mean, we did a lot of examples. Actually, we did uh, 10 different examples plus the... Um, explanations of why these rules even exist. So hopefully um, if you get these patterns down, you'll be able to blaze through this skill, factoring quadratics, special cases. Good luck.